It is absolutely no accident that you've stumbled upon this historic video. There has never been, nor shall there ever be, uh, any video on YouTube more important than this one, literally, literally. Because for people that want a kingdom age, only the knowledge that I alone have will save this earth. I am he, the writer of Isaiah 28, line by line, precept by precept, would the strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm, even as a hailstorm, to tell you that love is all in all, and that the mystery of the ages has been disclosed, but to one man in but a moment of a moment, within an instant of an instant, and it has always been only about love. That is God's fullness of his mystery. So get ready, get set, because the veil is now ready to come down. God has promised from off his latter-day mountain that I have created, as Isaiah 25 says, a latter-day mountain covered with spiritual food. That is not a normal, regular mountain. Uh, it's metaphoric. And uh, that the veil of love would be removed from off all nations, as it is written there and Micah 4 and Isaiah 60. For our son of love arises with healing in his wings. And in this hour of our majesty of majesty, our carpenter of the ages, calling each one of you by your own name, uh, be ready to be astounded. For the truest truth is, I am about ready to disclose over 70 uh, pro prophecies uh, for the end times that have happened right before your very own eyes, and you have been unaware. So be aware and get ready. Now, uh, I have the pleasure to introduce a young man, a uh, video, a beautiful one, and uh, that... Uh, explains the probability and the odds of anybody uh, fulfilling 50 biblical prophecies. And I've got closer to 70 under my name. Christ had 300 uh, uh, that he personally fulfilled, and it all makes sense. So uh, this will now be disclosed to you in this very special program, and the veil of love shall now be totally totally re removed, saith the Lord God. And so, get ready, here we go. After about a year's research, get ready they come because up everything with values, applying to Christ applies It was prophesied that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be crucified. Now, of course, there are many way. babies who have been born in Bethlehem, and the, certainly please. there are many men who have been crucified. But if we take all the prophecies, together in one package. Now, things become interesting when we are counting the probability of one man fulfilling the, those prophecies. Dr. Stoner's calculations were conservative and reasonable. For the first round, they considered eight most well-known prophecies that the Messiah I'm would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be crucified, 70. that he would be betrayed for 30 silvers by a friend. After hours and hours of calculations, they found that the chance of any man that might have lived down to the 20th prophecies century and fulfilled all prophecies, all eight prophecies, is one times. in 10 to the 17th power. That's just now that's eight. one with 17 zeros. Incredible. To help you visualize this number, if we laid these coins on the face of the UK and Ireland, they would cover the two islands 135 centimeters deep. What if I marked one coin and hit it somewhere on the face of the UK or Ireland, blindfolded you, put you on a helicopter, and uh, well, you can land anywhere you want, and the good luck with finding the coin, but you have only one chance to find it. What's the chance that you, you're going to find it? It's 1 in 10 to the 17th power. Just the same chance that the prophets would have had of writing these eight prophecies and having them fulfilled in one man's life from their time to the 20th century. Now, Dr. Stoners didn't stop here. He 
continued his calculations and added eight more prophecies to his list. Now the chance that one man could fulfill 16 prophecies is 1 in 10 to the 45th power. Now, um, I could describe this number to you, but I need some inspiration. Let's go. Let's take this number of coins and create a solid ball out of them. Do you know how big would it be? The diameter of this solid ball would be 9 billion kilometers. That is 60 times the distance between the sun and the earth. Imagine me marking one coin, hiding it somewhere, then I blindfold you and tell you that you have only one chance to find the marked coin. Would that be possible? And I wouldn't hide it on the surface of the ball. You might need to dig a couple of million kilometers in order to find the coin. What's the chance for finding the coin? Almost zero, or to be mathematically correct, one chance in 10 to the 45th power failures. Dr. Stoner has wanted to extend his consideration beyond all human comprehension, and he considered 48 prophecies. Now, he calculated with his team of 600 science students that the chance of one man fulfilling 48 prophecies and is one in 10 to the 157th power. Can you imagine that number? I mean, this this uh, coin is becoming like um, too big to our example. Like, you can't fit that amount of coins in our universe. We must select a smaller object. Now, the electron is probably the smallest object that we can use in this example. Let's lay one quadrillion of electrons uh, side by side in a one centimeter long line. I guess that's this much. If we were going to count these electrons in this line, and if we counted day and night, 250 electrons per minute, it would take us 7.5 million years to come from this end to this end. The electron is so small. Let's prophecies. make a solid ball out of electrons with a diameter of 12 billion light years. Have we used up all our 10 to the 157 power electrons? No, we created such a small ball in a huge mass that we can barely see it. We, we, we can create so many balls like this. Now, what if I marked an electron and hid it somewhere in the universe? What if I blindfolded you and sent you out into the universe in a rocket, hoping that you will stop at the right place where you could find this marked electron? What's the chance of that? It's, it's, it's all zero, like that, no chance. It's impossible that one man could fulfill 48 prophecies. It's like finding that one marked electron in the universe. Unless there is a divine being who knows the future. There is such a definite proof that God inspired the Old Testament writers that even, even the universe is not large enough to hold it. And do you know why? Because Jesus didn't fulfill only 48 prophecies. He fulfilled all 300. Wow. Now, why is this important for you and me? You know, the fascinating thing is that not only God knows the past and the future, but He keeps His promises. I'm going to try Amen. to be short here, but there is a Bible verse, John 3, 16, Elijah which says, shall come that God forth so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, so that whoever Get believes ready. in Him shall not perish, but here have eternal life. Go. So, welcome to an expose on over 70 prophecies fulfilled by me. I am the Latter-day Daniel, the Elijah of this age that was foretold. No one can deny it if they watch the rest of this video. So get ready because it's time for the climax of the ages to come forth like fireworks. And let it be. Let it explode in your heart to move us into a place where we can beat our sword into the sickle so that we can learn the ways of war no more. And that comes by realizing that the infinite aspect of love which is coming for each and every one of us 
because he is the white horseman of the apocalypse and he is dressed in his armor and he has an arrow and that arrow is Elijah of Isaiah 49 one who was hidden in his quiver for the end time hour of the explosion of his love around the earth so in this hour of love's revelation and the law of love given unto mankind realize now that it is pure folly to ignore this channel when this is the only channel that will be able to turn the tide back at the gates of hell because of my understanding I am the latter day Daniel the end time revelator as it has been foretold by Daniel himself in Daniel 12 13 that an end time Daniel would arise and stand in his lot in the house of the messengers and the prophets and it's not so important that I am a prophet I am the messenger of Malachi 3 1 so it is time to wink at that and while I go get a glass of water I'm gonna uh, put this on pause for one second I uh, playing around I'm gonna grab my telephone and I'm gonna read you something so uh, welcome love from love hope from hope peace from peace faith from he who is our majesty of majesties our hero of heroes our end time carpenter of the ages and as it is written in Acts 321 if the carpenter of the ages does not receive the restoration that he commands and demands uh, with the threat of a diarrhea shit dumb crap pie this is one of the prophecies of uh, Elijah that uh, one with stammering shocking lips Isaiah 28 would come and when he puts that diarrhea shit dumb crap pie in your eye guess what it's gonna trickle down your throat like a uh, malted milk and out your ears and out your nose all at the same time if you're going to be a shithead and ignore this most important crucial uh, video for this time so unto you Morgan official you have been outed at, as the lawless one and I will do combat spiritual combat with you or you will be unplugged and all your subscribers will start leaving you one by one because they will realize that you are nothing but a chicken and that you are you cannot face a debate against me because uh, no one would have any root or branch left to hold on to with me because I know the kingdom age because the Lord has shown it unto me I've had open-eyed visions and of things to come concerning the future of God's sons and daughters and work of his hands I have commanded him as it is written and he has asked uh, brave people of mankind to do exactly that in Isaiah 45 and when I did I was writing by a lamp that was never plugged in it was the lamp of Zechariah 4 one lamp not two as revelation has two candlesticks for the returning Elijah uh, who would be the, one of the two witnesses that he would minister death uh, to millions along with Moses but I am the Elijah who will return God's fierce terrifying anger and stop the battle at the gates of hell because in this hour it is vital and most important that people realize the truth unfolding that God is the Lord God of all mankind I am the covenant messenger giver and he says unto all people he says I am your God you are my people I have forgiven all your iniquity all your sin remember that Satan was the accuser of the brethren day and night before the Lord telling him all about our sin so unless he was gagged and removed as Daniel 12 once said would happen in the days of the latter day Daniel he would have instantaneously made God into a liar and that is impossible because our living Lord is nothing but truth so Iblis Diablo Beelzebub Mephistopheles snake of Eden Lucifer whatever you want to call that damn devil he is not upon earth according to prophecy whether people like it or not 
And I don't know why they would not like that fact. Sure, there's lots of demons left behind in that way. But get ready because this is going to become extremely interesting real quick. And with that, I'm going to go get a glass of water and pause this for one second. And as I disappear, I'll be right back in one second. And so it is. Mickey and Minnie have been telling people it's been a world of fears, a world of festering fears and tears, and it can now finally end. And Mickey and Minnie are happy because it's perfect love will cast out all fears. So welcome, and it's time to explore what winking is all about. Because life passes by in a wink, so never try to miss a moment of it. And a wink can speak much louder than any words. Maybe that's what life is, a wink of the eye and a winking of the stars. Uh, and when all eyes are on you, it's time to wink. I'm winking at uh, Mord official, Mr. Morgan Knight, the reveal lawless one of the book of Thessalonians. And praise God, he winked. Uh, uh, he winks at logic and reason, he says. But guess what? Every time he winks, he goes to sleep because his one eye is also the one that you think is open. It's also closed, blind as a bat. So it's time to realize that um, we got to move forward. And if we go two steps forward, one step back, back uh, we're still going in the right direction, especially when we realize that every time we wink, the stars above are moving. And the Lord is singing over us in uh, uh, utter happiness. And so in this hour, it's time to keep our eyes on the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem that is on its way, this way comes. So I'm going to Google New Jerusalem and NASA because this is a, a NASA Hubble telescope photo of the New Jerusalem on the edge of the universe. And you can Google that and see the celestial city. That celestial city, people, is uh, reflecting the sapphire sea on high. It is the crystalline blue bottomless ocean of the Lord's adoration for us. The mystery of God was that he never hated us at all in the beginning with uh, Noah. The reason why uh, everything was destroyed had nothing to do with whether he liked us or he hated us. Uh, but in actuality, he hasn't loved us. He adores us. Deeply devoted has he been. Always most all merciful has he been. And But the reason why Noah's uh, day killed everything was because of the gigantism. The daughters of uh, men were attracted to the sons of God, the fallen ones. And they knocked them up, and then came the Nephilim, the giants. Even after the flood, many still survived. Uh, and so it was written in the book of Numbers that in Moses' day, long after the flood, flood had come and gone, that in the land of Palestine, Moses' people went and they came back and said, These guys are, to, to them, we are but as grasshoppers in their sight, in the book of Numbers. So we had 2,000 pounds lost, 2,000 pounds, and evolution has utterly been a lie. Uh, you can't start with a fish and end up with a toad that grows legs and then end up with this mammal. From DNA, you get a, from a toad, you can only get a toad. From a frog, you can only get a frog. It never can deviate. Now, if you mix a toad and a frog, you can get a fode, or you can get a, uh, what is it, a frog toad? <laughs> you get the idea. But well, one thing is for sure, it is time to reveal the secret of the ages. And I'm going to disclose that in one minute. And I'm going to pause this, and I will be right, right back. So enjoy a, a chance to smile. And now I'm going to wink at you. Well, 
Here I am, verily, verily, truly, truly, I, Daniel, say unto all people of the earth, I am the one who has done everything in vain, Isaiah 49, for I have fulfilled that prophecy. I've been preaching two years to white noise. No one will listen to me. I have been crying out in a wilderness of ignorance, and there is no darker gross darkness than the ignorance of love alone. Okay, let's start off prophecies fulfilled by me. I am from the north, Isaiah 41. I live in Canada, and the Lord God is now saying unto all people, I am your God. You are my people. I forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it. When you hear those words comes the obsolescence of all religion, as Hebrews 8 said. And uh, Muhammad said the same thing. He said in the end days there would be a book proving God's mercy that would remove all distortionalities. And he said, there'll never be another prophet ahead of me. He knew it was Jeremiah. Those words of Jeremiah 31, uh, they tear down all kingdoms of man's imagination, as Jeremiah 110 and Haggai 2, 2 says. And so I am the alcoholic weed hash smoker of Genesis 49, 12. Uh, I am called Shiloh because uh, by Moses, because uh, the first Elijah had not yet come. He had never heard the name Elijah. And I am the one transgressed by wine in Habakkuk 2. Uh, the just will live by my faith, even though my soul might not be upright, because nobody is any damn good, lest we boast. Uh, because uh, the Bible says there is no good man, no, not even one, Romans 3.10. It's Christ living in us as a little child if we will choose the way of unconditional love. Wide is the way to hell paved with conditional love as we become desensitized and practice being unloving. And so it's time that the just will live by my faith because I am already as hell and I can never be satisfied as I embrace all people unto the Lord who is the good shepherd over all the, all the flocks of man. And I accuse, as Elijah, all people of having a false god, um, all people out there that have a respecter of man, God likes them best. Right away you know that they have a, a false god because uh, Christians are the worst of the bunch. Uh, if you don't believe that he's loved like they do, he's going to hate you eternally and let you sizzle and all that bullshit from Dante's uh, Inferno. Uh, from medieval uh, lore long back. And so in this hour, it's time to separate truth from fiction. Uh, I am the alcoholic of Zechariah 3 that was standing there uh, in Zechariah 3 with barf all over myself. Then God lit one candlestick, not two. Uh, and the, then went the flying scroll of Zechariah 5. I am the writer of Isaiah 28, line by line, precept by precept, with the strong and mighty one come forth as a supernova, as a destroying storm, as a hell storm, storm pulling down distortionalities. And so it's time that a writer like Moses, Deuteronomy 18, 18 and Acts 3 comes. And you know that was not Jesus because Peter said the same thing. He said, remember what Moses said in Deuteronomy 18, 18, that the end time revelator coming, uh, that uh, people must listen to him or this world would be destroyed. Uh, and Jesus cannot come back. He's kept in reserve in heaven, Acts 3, 21. That is who I am, is the bringer of the news that would release him from heaven. And people do not like that noise. And so I am the writer of the everlasting gospel. I am the writer of the flying scroll. I am the writer of the end time. And uh, I am the covenant messenger, uh, the latter day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, who has embraced his Elijah destiny as it is written there. And as the covenant messenger of Malachi 3, 1, I am preparing the way as I turn the hearts of children to fathers and fathers. Hopefully the children, fathers haven't been listening to me, but maybe the kids will. I'm telling them, you got to love your parents with, uh, in spite of kind of love and through it, uh, all kind of love. Not if or but, but or a conditional love, because that's fake children. Children, that's just shallow as a glass of water love that's not even existent. And so everybody has a false God that has conditional love. Love is patient and kind and long-suffering. And love only desires to love. That is the secret name of Christ from Mark 4, 
to which every knee will bow, every tongue will confess him. So uh, it's time to realize that I am the revealer of Amos 7's truth, that our Lord Jesus Christ Almighty is the good shepherd over all the flocks of man uh, whom the Christians do not have, and the world does not have that God. And God, no one has the God of the Bible, no one. Uh, God declares, I am the Lord God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. So this restoration will bring that back as he pulls down the val uh, pulls down the mountains, lifts up the valleys. Don't want to be wixing my merge now. And so I am the one that the Lord has given the latter day name of Israel unto. It is written in uh, Isaiah 62, 2, that in the latter days God would appoint them a new name, and he has chosen Chrislam because they have inherited all born again. Uh, people, because uh, the distortionality of the main one in this world came 2,000 years ago when first Christians just ignorantly didn't understand. They stole a covenant that God had never given, and he's never given it until the latter days by me, because I am Elijah. Um, and so the truth is, it was to be given in the latter days. It says so in Jeremiah 31.1. And so in this hour, uh, it's revealed now uh, from off all nations of the world, as Isaiah 25 predicted, uh, that uh, when they stole all the Hebrew book, then they dared to say, and we are Israel, and all the prophecy is for us. And they erased Israel as the true uh, people that God had promised his covenant to, and they uh, erased all mankind because it was to be given to them as well. Uh, and that is why Israel has inherited all mankind. Isaiah 54, 3 is another uh, manifested prophecy. And it says so, Isaiah 54, 3, that they would inherit all mankind. And so I am the manifested hidden arrow of Isaiah 49 that the Lord Jesus Christ will use as mightily as he fights against the pale, the black, and the speckled horses of death, uh, the one of war, a famine, and disease. And man, this world will get so bad if people will not begin listening to me. There will be seven horny women for one horny man, according to Isaiah 4, because so many men, especially in Europe, will be just dead. Uh, and so it's time that the bearer of uh, Daniel 7 5 has heard the voice now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like the great Soviet bearer of the Bible and it is time to realize that uh, the weapon of Christ is sharp as a double-edged sword and it is the truth of prophecy it's so sharp can easily cut a soul right out of the spirit and vice versa and so I, I am the revealer of uh, the false prophet, Dr. David Uar, who's called down fire from heaven in front of multitudes, as Revelation 13 says. And uh, the latter-day mountain of Isaiah 2 and Micah 4 and Isaiah 25 covered with food has now been revealed. I'm also the revealer of the earth's true beginnings, as Moses foretold, and as the Bible said, a, a gospel of creation, everlasting gospel of creation would come, and that is recorded. Just uh, Google or put into YouTube, um, everlasting gospel of uh, creation. It should come up for you. Uh, the manifestation of Isaiah 54, 3 has happened. The manifestation of Satan being removed has happened. Uh, for, on the foretold messengers, uh, who has done everything in vain. That's happened. Uh, the servant of 49.8, it's up to me to reassign our desolate heritages, for we couldn't see the forest of love for the trees and the way. And um, so in this hour, it's time to realize that these days of Noah are exactly like the days of Noah. And the, the words of Deuteronomy 18, Acts 3, Matthew 24, 22, Zephaniah 1, 1, Malachi 4, 6, Isaiah 24, they all spell our doom. Isaiah 24 says, an earth will never rise again, and it shows earth in pieces. 
and the salvation of earth is found in Isaiah 25, the very next chapter, because that is the chapter where the Lord reveals all the mysteries of God. And the mystery of God has happened now because the first is last and the last is first. The seven trumpet of Revelation 10, seven did sound first, as Christ always said, and now all nations have become his because of the covenant. Uh, and in this hour, it's time to reveal God's uh, offer to cut time short, uh, Matthew 24, 22, and Jeremiah 30, 24. Read them and be happy that we don't have to have uh, end time of total disaster where all people will have to go underground. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Mark that all the people, the kings, the wise, the slaves, will all have to go underground because of the nuclear uh, winter. And that's why Zechariah predicted the battles of slaughter where eyes will consume away in sockets, tongue consume away in mouth, and flesh as we stand. And so I'm the revealer of COVID, the trial of all flesh that's come to bring God's word of patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation not to change, not to beat our sword into the sickle to learn the ways of war no more, not to change our faith, a conditional love into the real thing, unconditional love. Unless we become like a little children and get out of the land of the walking dead, where our love has become a noun, not going anywhere, giving us a form of godliness, but denying the power of love who is God in us. And every knee will bow at the name of love. Every tongue will confess Christ as love. The name of Jesus was just a distortional name of a false uh, Jesus who is not the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. Uh, he does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so in, in this hour, it's time to realize that if what I'm saying is true, uh, he will now finally become the desire of all nations that he could not be. It is a lie, Christians, to think that he's the desire of all nations. They just don't know it. That's bullshit. He's going to be the desire of all nations, and they are going to know it. Uh, and so I am the revealer of earth made with very great age. Adam and Eve had no belly buttons. This is written in the book of Giants and the book of uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls and the book of Enoch. I am the revealer of uh, Emmanuel being committed the moment that the knife went up because within that moment uh, it committed people into coming forth. Now this video is going to be in part one and part two. It's gone a little, I've, I'm only up to uh, prophecy number uh, almost 40, uh, but I still got about 20 more to go. So please watch the rest of this and realize it is impossible to uh, knit together all these many prophecies and me not to be the guy that I am saying I am. So I'm just going to continue on and I will be cut off and uh, we'll put a part two on in a very short video secondary to this. And so in this hour, uh, it's time that I carry the scepter of all kingdom age authority, as it is written in Isaiah 49 eight, from one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, uh, red from the THC, and a lot of visine to prove that Jesus was never a smoker, nor was he an alcoholic whose eyes were dull of wine, as I have been. So in this hour, it's time the refiner's fire is, is falling to purify 